Coming up on 5-Minute News. Ethiopia declares immediate unilateral ceasefire in Tigray. Supreme Court won't revive transgender bathroom ban. And US warns that Islamic State extremists still a world threat. It's Tuesday, June 29. I'm Anthony Davis. Ethiopia's government on Monday declared an immediate unilateral ceasefire in its Tigray region after nearly eight months of deadly conflict. As Tigray forces occupied the regional capital, soldiers retreated and hundreds of thousands of people continue to face the world's worst famine crisis in a decade. The ceasefire could calm a war that has destabilized Africa's second most populous country and threatened to do the same in the wider Horn of Africa, where Ethiopia has been seen as a key security ally for the West. It comes as the country awaits the results of national elections that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed promoted as the centerpiece of reforms that won him the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize. Abiy's transformation from making peace into waging war has appalled many observers since the fighting in Tigray erupted in November. Since then, the world has struggled to access much of the region and investigate growing allegations of atrocities, including gang rapes and forced starvation. Thousands of people in the region of six million have been killed. Ethiopia's statement was carried by state media shortly after the Tigray interim administration, appointed by the federal government, fled the regional capital and called for a ceasefire on humanitarian grounds so that desperately needed aid can be delivered. The US Supreme Court on Monday rejected a Virginia school board's appeal to reinstate its transgender bathroom ban, handing a victory to transgender rights groups and a former high school student who fought in court for six years to overturn the ban. After learning that the High Court refused to hear the board's appeal, Gavin Grimm, now 22, said that his long battle is over. We won, he tweeted. Honoured to have been part of this victory, he added. Grimm was a 15-year-old student at Gloucester High School when he was banned from using the boys' bathroom. The Gloucester County School Board's policy required Grimm to use restrooms that corresponded with his biological sex, female, or private bathrooms. Grimm filed a federal lawsuit that wound its way through the courts for six years. Grimm said that being forced to use the nurses' room, a private bathroom and the girls' restroom, was humiliating and severely interfered with his education. He said he is heartened by his victory in court because a win in Virginia is a win everywhere. The Supreme Court left in place lower court rulings that found the policy unconstitutional. The American Civil Liberties Union said the High Court's decision to let stand the lower court rulings supporting transgender rights is a significant victory for Grimm and transgender students across the country. As the US works on its military withdrawal from Afghanistan, members of the Global Coalition Fighting the Islamic State group met on Monday to chart future steps against the extremist group. The meeting came just a day after the US launched airstrikes against Iran-backed militias near the Iraq-Syria border. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Italian Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio co-chaired the gathering of senior officials from the seven-year-old 83-member bloc. Participants were taking stock of current efforts to ensure the complete defeat of IS, whose remnants still pose a threat in Iraq and Syria and have shown signs of surging in parts of Africa. Amid significant other international priorities, including taming the coronavirus pandemic and stepping up the fight against climate change, the coalition is hoping to stabilise areas liberated from IS, repatriate and hold foreign fighters accountable for their actions, and combat extremist messaging. Outside of Iraq and Syria, he said there was an alarming surge in IS activity, particularly in Sahel, Mozambique and the Horn of Africa. He called for the coalition to create a special mechanism to deal with the threat in Africa. 
Blinken noted that despite their defeat, IS elements in Iraq and Syria still aspire to conduct large-scale attacks. Together, we must stay as committed to our stabilization goals as we did to our military campaign that resulted in victory on the battlefield, he said. Blinken announced a new U.S. contribution of $436 million to assist displaced people in Syria and surrounding countries and called for a new effort to repatriate and rehabilitate or prosecute some 10,000 IS fighters who remain imprisoned by the Syrian Defence Forces. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news. Daily.